Welcome back, family, friends, and fans. It's Karma Lee. Today, we're going to start working on a room box. And by the way, if you're interested in videos like miniatures, book binding or scrapbooking, paper crafts, sewing videos, hauls, music videos, and when I say music, I mean song covers or original music, please subscribe to Karma Lately. I know that most of you that are watching right now are not subscribed. It would be so amazing if you join the family. I try to post at least two videos a week, but at least one video per week is where I'm at right now. So without further ado, let's get into the planning of our room box. If you don't know what a room box is, it's basically just a A display and the display could be a coffee shop it could be a garden it could be a room whatever you want to make it and I love room boxes because you get to create as much as you can in this one box and it doesn't take up a lot of space and it can be decorative and that kind of thing there's a little bit of planning that we have to do for this so there is going to be two parts to this video. I wanted to make the first part more about us planning and also getting some executing done, but just setting up some really good groundwork so that we're not confused about what's going to happen later. We are going to start talking about what your doll looks like. So are you doing a room box for your Barbie or are you doing your room box for a smaller doll or an even smaller doll or a bigger doll than Barbie? Those are all things that you should probably have an idea of. The doorway for a doll that is about this size, which this is about a, how tall she is. She's five and three quarters of an inch tall. So a typical, so she belongs in the collector scale or the one inch equals a foot scale. So her doorway is going to be about seven inches high at most. Um, that's probably the biggest that her doorway is going to be. A Barbie is 11 and a half inches tall. So that doorway is going to be too small for her. And in terms of this doll going into the Barbie dollhouse, well, Barbie's doll, Barbie's doorway is going to be too high for her to probably even reach the doorknob. So this is why it's very important that you plan this out. It's very simple and super easy. The only difference, if you're working on a different scale, uh, you can still watch this video. The only difference is you should go online and check to see. For the Barbie scale, it's called either the Barbie scale, the play scale, mostly. It's mostly called the play scale, or it is called the um, one inch equals six inches scale one inch equals i think it's six i think it's six inches okay so i'm gonna put it right here what the actual yeah whatever this is right here perfect please tune in i'm excited because i feel like this is going to be really helpful for any scale i'm going to be working on the one inch equals a foot scale one inch equals a foot means if it's one inch in the dollhouse or in my room box, that means that it's 12 inches or a foot in the real world. And that just makes my life so much easier. It's also my favorite scale. A little bit about me, why I'm so obsessed with dollhouses, especially the collector's dollhouses. When I was a little girl, about five, six years old, my mom would, she had a, a dear friend of hers who would babysit me while she worked. And this woman had massive collection of dollhouses and she had this room and it was full of these giant like high tables that I couldn't reach with dollhouses and they were decorated and she would go in there every day and I'd see her playing around with them and fixing things and fixing and touching and adding things to the dollhouse and I was not allowed to touch it and I thought this was crazy so I became obsessed with dollhouses and yeah, that's, that's really that. Between men and women, the average height is anywhere between five to six feet, five to six feet. In the dollhouse world, in the collector scale, 
the average height is anywhere between five to six inches. See how easy that is? I'm going to take you guys over to Canva and you guys are going to see how easy it is to make a background on Canva. How to design your wallpaper so that it can bring the dollhouse to life. And everything that we're going to do is paper friendly and easy. So if you're a mom, a teacher, a student, anyone can get their hands on a printer and figure this out. So now I'm going to take you guys to the computer. I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to carry you and I'm going to drop you into the computer. Boom. You guys made it, but you're so heavy. No, I'm just kidding. I am going to make myself smaller. And I want to talk to you guys about Canva. So I do plan on making a Canva tutorial. This tutorial today is specifically for anyone that wants to design their own uh, interior part of the dollhouse from the flooring to the walls and um, just some little cute details, even a paper doll. And I cannot wait to show you guys what that means. Since I've already decided on my scale, and we talked about that earlier, really pause the video and research scales so that you guys can see exactly what it is that um, I'm talking about. Now that I've decided that, now I know what size I want my room, which is the most important thing. You want the room dimensions to be good. So I want the height of the room to be eight and a half uh, inches. And I want the length of the room to be 11 inches. And yes, eight and a half by 11 is the size of a regular paper, which is so convenient because then when I print it out, it's going to be um, the perfect size. So that's the size that I want to have my room dimension. I want the height to be eight and a half inches and I want the length to be 11 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and I know that flyers, flyers, I'm going to choose the blank one. Here's my workspace. I chose a flyer. Now the flyer is standing on the vertical long side and I don't want that. I want it to be on its side. So I'm going to resize it right up here on the toolbar menu. I'm going to resize it and you see how it says eight and a half by 11. I'm gonna, I need to move myself over here for a minute. <laughs> um, I'm going to resize and I'm going to make this 11 and this eight and a half inches. And I'm going to resize it. And now you see it's standing on its side, which is exactly what I want. You can either choose to just get a plain background and I'm gonna show you what that means. Over here on the left-hand side, you have a fun, another fun toolbar and we're going to click on background and I am going to, I, you can scroll down and look at all the different categories and those categories, you can go into them, but I'm going to go into the toolbar and I'm going to research and you can see some of my previous searches here. Um, I'm going to research bricks. Now here are all the different brick options. For our scale, we should be using bricks that are small and tiny just so that it looks a lot more realistic. So if you could find it like this or smaller would be great. That's too big. Um, because you want it to be to scale with your doll. Now, since we don't have a doll right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a doll on Canva. And this, guys, I'll be, I have to be honest with you, I just discovered this 
this year and I have been dying to show you guys how to do this. So you can actually use the doll that I'm about to create to help you figure out if you have everything to scale. You can also use the doll to actually print her out in paper and then stick it on some sturdy cardboard and then you have a paper doll. I am going to go to elements and when you go to elements there's a lot of different things that you can use. You can do lines, shapes, frames, stickers, charts, grids, symbols, objects, flowers, animals, and people. So I'm going to just go right into the search bar and I'm going to pick, I'm going to choose woman. And I want a woman that has her full body and that I can see things clearly. So I'm going to choose this young woman right here. <laughs> okay, I'm so excited about this, guys. This is really exciting. So what we need to know, the average person in the one inch equals a foot scale is about uh, anywhere between five and six inches tall. Measure your doll. Typically, the dolls, uh, the Barbie dolls are 11 and a half inches tall, but there are some other dolls that are a little bit bigger and there's other dolls that are a little bit smaller. Depending if the brand is not Barbie, then and you're trying to make a dollhouse for those dolls, just get a ruler. Forget about going online. Just get a ruler and measure your dolls because you're trying to cater your dollhouse to your dolls. So this is my doll and I need to, I need to make sure that she's the right size on Canva. If you highlight the doll, I made sure that she is right on the line. You see how that line in the bottom turned purple as soon as I place her on it. That's letting me know she's right. Oops. I just passed the line that lets me know she's right on the line. Now I'm going to see how tall she is. And right now she is four inches, 4.1, 4.2. Um, the first number that you're seeing, it says width 1.3 wide. And the height is telling me how tall she is. And it's so far, she's 4.3 and 4.6, 4.8, 4.9, 5.1. I'm going to make her five, three. Now that I've made her five, three, the brick actually looks good. Now let me show you another brick. Let's see this one. See? That's not realistic. I, I originally showed you guys that one and I had that feeling that it wasn't realistic because the bricks just look way too big for this scale. So you want to explore and this is helpful. Like even if you already have dolls and, but it's good to create a doll just so that you can explore the different backgrounds and see, um, this one is not that bad. It's not, uh, that's too big. She looks like she's, she's in, she's Photoshopped because the bricks are just too big. So I think the winner for the background brick wall challenge is this one right here. I think that's the winner. That's the keeper. And if you were trying to do the exterior of your dollhouse, this would be really, really cool. You could do it as the interior, but to me, the bricks don't look as good as I would have liked for the interior. We can get a color. I use my tool. I use the toolbar. It helps me to save time. If I'm looking for something specific, then I'll just go to, I'll just pick the color. You know what? I'm going to go up here 
to these colors and I'm going to pick my own color just for fun. I'm going to pick, let me see if I can make it a little lighter. I'm going to do this like minty green. I'm going to show you guys how to create a cute background with Canva. Now you can do it intricately or you can do it, you can do it the easy way or you can do it the more complex way. The easy way would be to go in here and say, let's say we wanted to do a kitchen. Oh, sorry, we're in backgrounds. So we have to go to back to elements. Sorry about that. It's really early in the morning <laughs> and um, I've been up for hours and now the alarm goes off that it's like, nine in the morning thanks um okay so now we're back in elements and we're gonna choose kitchen we're gonna pick kitchen oh my god how long does it take i'm looking for a fully made kitchen that one looks okay. Ooh, <laughs> I like some of these options. All right, you know what? I was gonna, I guess I could stick to kitchen, but this looks really cute. I like this. Um... I like this a lot. Now, um, we can't see the doll anymore. So what I'm gonna do, I have this <clears throat> scene highlighted. I'm gonna go to position and I'm just gonna push it backward. And now she pops up. And now I can see how much I need to, I think I still need to make it I don't think this um, particular one is going to work, but you can explore different ones to see. Let me check out this one, actually. This one looks like it could be good. Okay, I'm going to position it backward. Bring her here. And I can still afford to lift this up. And some of it is going to be lost, but that's quite all right. I just need to make sure that she doesn't look like she's in the in a weird spot. One, let me see this one. Okay, this one looks good, actually. So I'm going to position her forward. Okay. And then you can print it out. Um, you can decorate it. You can put pots and pans on here. On the counter and that kind of thing. And make sure that it looks to scale. And you'll know because, you know, this still looks a little big. I, I guys I'm sorry I have no idea where I went but I know it's still recording so I'm gonna keep going you don't have to see my face the whole time if I pop up that'd be nice but whatever so I like that but you can also do it from scratch scratch and I'm gonna show you a cool way to do it you can actually access Pixabay on Canva but I like to get Pixabay myself so Pixabay is um, a really great website, high quality stock images, and they're copyright free. And I'm going to look up um, kitchen. Now that I've looked up kitchen 
And if you wanted to put a realistic um, kitchen instead of like an animated, like a illustrated one, you could. In the toolbar, there are a lot of filters that you can select so that you can really uh, hone in on what you're looking for. For me, I am looking for transparent. I'm going to say go because I am trying to cater to teachers and parents and I want to give you guys options for working with your children on these product projects. But for adults um, who are just having a good time, like the way I do, <laughs> you guys can go ahead and um, select whatever kind of images you want. It doesn't have to be. I select the transparent and what that's going to do is it's going to give me a lot of vector images that look illustrated and that's kind of the vibe that I'm looking for. This one, oh wow, look at this. This one's like all done for you guys. I think I want to download it. And I am registered, but I didn't sign in. So I'm just going to do this quick captcha. Where are the mountains? Okay, and download. Okay, I saved the file and now we're gonna go back because I saw a couple of other things. Oh my God, look how cute this is. This is way too cute. Oh my gosh, I have to download this. So what I was going to show you guys was how to use these stock images for making your own dollhouse. Um, oh God, you know, I should have just signed in to my, um, is that a crosswalk? Oh God, I didn't do it right. Great. Traffic lights. I, I messed up. All right. I'm, I'm not going to download everything. What I want to do is just, I fall in love with these things. Um, see if I could find, so see here, this is a window. It's like vintage looking a window, two chairs. And here is just a plain countertop that you can decorate yourself. And it's really simple to do this. You can go to Canva and it might be easier to use the Pixabay that's on here. So you just go to Pixabay right here and you can download the images. But I like to go to the actual site because um, I can fool around with the filters better. I like to go to the actual site and do it myself. Um, what you're going to do now that we've downloaded a few, you're going to go into your uploads um, and you can peruse your um, Pixabay and filter and just go crazy with that and download onto your website or onto your phone, whatever you're using to do this. Because the funny thing is you could use Canva and Pixabay on your phone and design and create this uh, all on your phone. You don't have to be on the computer. For me, it works better to be on the computer. So I'm going to go to upload. I'm going to upload from my device and I'm going to open. And I'm going to try them each separately just to see. Oh my God. So adorably cute. That's super cute. So you can download these images. I like to use Pixabay because these are images that I'm free to use and I won't get in trouble for that. I won't be violating someone's copyright and you know, that's really the way that I want to do it. Right now she looks like she's behind the counter, which is cute. And then I'm going to position this backwards and I put her in front and in front of the refrigerator. You know, I feel like this could afford to be a little bit higher. 
and let's go back to elements have a little more fun and let's get her a boyfriend a live-in boyfriend let's see what we got here okay I want a full body I want someone I'd like to see somebody's face if it's possible No, he's got to be, like, she's cool. He's got to be, like, fly. Like, he's got to be fly, fly. You know what I mean? I saw a fly guy. I just can't see his face. All right, this guy's fly. He's, like, too cool to even look at her right now. Put him right here. She needs some help around the house, dude. Let's get you a little bit of height there. He doesn't even have a face. That's how cool he is. <laughs> oh, but she's too fierce to care. Uh, where is... Okay. So this is how fun this is. And you can really, oh, we're in elements. Always make sure when you're going to do this search, you're always in elements. I really like um, doing the living room. So what you guys are going to end up doing is you're going to end up printing these out and gluing it on and for teachers i think this is really fun because you can have a couple of different printouts for your students and um i think they'll have a really great time making these um making these rooms you know let's position these guys i want to see what's going on here um and for two people i had to click backwards so um let's say so right now i'm highlighting the screen the background and i position it in order to move forward on both of them i have to click it twice so forward forward and now they're behind the couch and then backward backward and then they're in front of the couch so you kind of have to do it twice um, because the couch is in the distance, this looks good to me. Um, could afford to be a little shorter, actually. Because the couch is in the distance and you don't want to make things look big. But this all has to do with your eye and how you see it. Um... And there you have it. And we can actually afford to bring in, let's see, yeah, got everything in. The lamp is in, the window's in. And now you have this. And then you can remove, you can remove the, I'm not removing them completely, but you can delete them and then you will have your entire um <clears throat> actually i'll delete them and i can always bring them back by clicking undo redo and undo so now you have this and you can print this out and you can do this for every room that you want to do in our case we're just doing a room box so typically for a room box you only need two walls you need the vertical, you need the, the wall goes in line with the horizontal length, which is 11 inches. So you need a wall that's 11 inches wide and eight and a half inches um, and eight and a half inches high. And then you need another wall and you'll need to resize this. Another wall that is eight and a half inches high and eight and a half inches um, wide because that's the side wall. And so it's going by the length of the height only. Okay, so 
you're going to print two of these and I'm going to print two of these and we are going to do this together. And so this is how to do the dollhouse beginner style, how to create a really cool dollhouse to make in class with your students or to make at home all you, you know, the young teens and early 20s people. This is a really, really fun. I was making my dollhouses in my 20s and um, it's a lot of fun to make and you can really have a blast, trust me, with your friends doing this. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go to my printer, I'm gonna print this one out and I'm gonna make a side wall as well. Let me see if I make a side wall with you guys while I have you here. I'm gonna add a new page and this page I need to resize. I'm gonna recommend that you don't add a new page and resize it without either locking the previous one or just starting a whole new project because when you resize the second page, the first page is going to also resize. So I still don't have a handle on locking. I don't know if you can see the lock uh, icon in between the, the sizes, the custom sizes. Um, I still don't have a handle on the locking thing. I'm gonna figure that out. So I'm just gonna recommend that you either lock, figure out the locking or just start a new project for the eight and a half by eight and a half size. To eight and a half by eight and a half. Ooh, eight and a half. I'm going to resize that. And that's perfect. That is the perfect size. And I have to decide what I wanna put. I think this is cute. This guy's this guy looks like he's like too cool to be anywhere. I'm gonna make him five nine. I don't like it. Okay, she's going to be 5'2". And I'm going to put all of my people on here. I'm gonna go back and get the other two and resize them. And maybe they're a group of roommates, but we'll have a couple of paper dolls that we can cut out and then put on cardboard. Actually, I changed my mind. I want to make my own um, side wall because I didn't like the other one and oh by the way i added a dog to the mix here so those are all the people so i just created a new page see where it says add new page and i added everyone here so they have a cute little dog i put it up here so that i when i'm cutting it out um it's not so difficult i wanted to put like a little a little bookshelf and I need one of you guys. Oh, where are you? I need one of you guys to help me with this. So I can see how big this bookshelf is. So you do something like family room and you already have um, the family there. They're already um, picked out for you. I really think it's cool that Canva has all these options. I should have maybe put wall art. If you put painting, they're going to show you someone painting. So here it is, hanging painting. 
Um, and Canva tells you when you're in the middle. So you see when you see that purple line that's telling me that I'm in the middle. And that I'm uh, this the other line that's on top of the lamp is telling me that I'm right on the line of the lamp, which is fine by me. I think I'm going to go ahead and print that out. You have to come back down here. And these are my, this is one wall. This is another wall. And these are our people. So now we're going to print these out. And then I want you guys to get some cereal boxes or cardboard boxes, anything cardboard that you have in your home um, that you don't mind cutting up and using. By the way, this is how you group. Um, I almost forgot. So I just covered this painting um, with this. I just like it better. And But I can't move the whole thing. See, it's only going to move one part. I need the whole thing to move together. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put position my cursor um, outside of, right outside of the picture frame and the painting. And I'm going to hold down my left, um, the left click, the left click on your computer. And I am going to then slide down with my other hand. I'm sliding down, but I'm catching. See, I don't want to catch the the lamp and the chair. So I'm going to stop right here. I don't need to go all the way down. See, if I go all the way down, I'm catching them. And I don't want to group them. I just want to group the picture frame and the picture. I let go. And then I'm going to click up here and a lot and group comes up. And I click on group. And now, now I'm able to move them both around and I don't have to fix it anymore. Yeah. For the page where you're going to be uh, putting all of your characters, animals, pets, people, you can change the background back to white so you don't waste um, ink because you're not going to be using that background. So you don't want to waste money on ink. And that is it. Now I'm officially ready to get you guys to the drawing board. Stay tuned for part two, where we're going to build, we're going to print everything out, build the dollhouse, and you guys are going to love this. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll catch you guys in part two. Peace.